All right. Good afternoon, everyone, once again. Yeah, so uh, our speaker has already joined us. And therefore, without wasting much time, we will proceed with our webinar, today's uh, afternoon's webinar. So on the accounts of our World Alzheimer's Day, the Psychology Department has organized this webinar uh, on the team, let's talk about dementia. And today we have our resource person among our mates, Dr. Viketu Lepine, uh, our senior medical officer from the State Mental Health Institute. So uh, thank you, sir, for joining us. Uh, in spite of your busy schedule, uh, we are happy that you have accepted our request on this um, uh, occasion of World Alzheimer's Day. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Sainis. Thank you, Sainis. Yeah, thank you and welcome. So today, so today uh, the order of the program is... 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 We have... We have... Uh, I'll, uh, be I'll be in the program. In the program. And uh, as, uh, mentioned as mentioned earlier, earlier uh, Dr. Viketu Lipin will be our resource be our person. person. And uh, the opening remarks will be delivered to us by Ms. Ontolo. And at the end of the session, we will have a few minutes of, so of question and answer. So I request all the participants to uh, uh, raise, raise any queries, any queries or questions, questions during this uh, given this time. time. Yeah. And uh, I will be, I won't be uh, reading out this uh, part of the program again, so I hope uh, the participants will follow the resource person and the opening remarks will follow this uh, part of the program. Can you hear me? Hello? Uh, yes, we can. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, yes sir, sir, we can hear you. Okay, okay. 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 Yeah. All right, so... Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, I think there's some echo. Uh-huh. Is it okay now? Uh... No, it's still there. Is it, is it okay? Can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir, we can hear you clearly. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, okay. I think that's a little better. Uh, is, it, uh, is it time for me now to take over? Uh, uh, just uh, wait just for the screen with yeah. yeah. Now, uh, now the, the time will be given to uh, the, for the opening, remarks. opening remarks. Yes, yes. so on down low, you can take your time. I, on behalf of the College, College and the Department of Psychology, welcome each and every one of you today to observe World Alzheimer's Day. I think there's a little bit of an echo. Uh, 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 sir, if you don't mind, uh, is it okay if you can hear your audio for now? Sorry? Audio. Is it, okay, is it okay uh, uh, if you can uh, switch can, uh, off your audio for, for a few minutes? Okay, okay. I'm so sorry about that. I think it's because of that that uh, it's been echoing. Okay. So um, Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia is a rapidly growing public health concern, especially in a country like India where we have a huge uh, elderly population. It is estimated that uh, by this year, 4 million people, 14% uh, of the world's elderly people are going to be living in India. And also there are 4 million people who currently have some form of dementia in India and it is only going to increase because um, the incidence rate is only going to increase and this issue needs to be addressed. So on account of this day, I was just reading up a few things on Alzheimer's disease. So I decided to look up uh, Nagaland statistics also, and I couldn't find any. 
So I actually contacted a senior doctor who works very closely with my community. And I was told that from his 30 plus years of experience, he has only encountered very few cases of diagnosed uh, Alzheimer's. And, um, and there are only a handful of people who have been diagnosed yet. And this is not because there has been no incidents, but it is uh, because of lack of knowledge and of care and treatment, which can be availed. And most symptoms of Alzheimer's are actually being just labeled as signs of old age and being and as nothing more. And it is very sad, but uh, some elderly in our uh, with Alzheimer's are also being labeled as mad in the rural areas, especially in our land. So the government of India has also put out a number of uh, national health programs for elderly. So if uh, preventive measures can be taken, if intervention can be made, if uh, symptoms management can be applied, I think we should not, uh, we should avail it because our elderly also deserve to live the end of their lives with dignity. And so that is why we are so delighted to have Dr. Viketo Lepenu here today with us, the Senior Medical Officer of State Mental Health Institute, Kohima, to share his experience and knowledge with us. He also teaches at the State Council of Educational Research and Training, which is the SCERT. He works very closely with people who have mental health issues and substance abuse history. He is also a motivational speaker and his area of expertise is stress management. And I would also like to add that uh, geriatric psychology and geriatric care is taking foreground and many people, many young professionals are opting this as a career path. So with many of our elderly also investing heavily on uh, retirement plans and later life health plans, which is why I believe that this talk is very timely to help us bring awareness and also start dialogues on intervention plans within our own community. I thank you, Doctor, once again for coming, taking the time to come address our college and also all the part participants who have joined. We're looking forward to learning from you. Can I switch on now? Hello? Yes, sir, you can take it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, should I take over now? Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, today is the twenty-first of September, and twenty-first of September is uh, commemorated as World Alzheimer's Day. World Alzheimer's Day. The theme for this uh, World Alzheimer's Day is uh, let's talk about dementia. Every year, the 21st September is always uh, uh, commemorated as uh, World Alzheimer's Day. And the aim of this uh, day is to raise awareness and highlight the issue of dementia, number one. Number two, this day is uh, commemorated to create an opportunity for people and organization to understand how we can overcome this issue, break the stigma and help people live with dignity. And number three, the aim is to uh, provide and enhance the quality of life for people living with dementia. All over the world, we have about uh, roughly uh, 50 million uh, uh, patients suffering from uh, Alzheimer's disease. As you may be aware, Alzheimer's disease was first uh, coined or discovered by a doctor by the name Alois Alzheimer back in 1906. So after the name of this physician, the disease was coined. Alzheimer's disease, as we understand, it is a psychiatric condition which is characterized by the following signs and symptoms. Firstly, there will be a decline in cognitive functions like memory lapse, attention lapse, and difficulty in reasoning, difficulty in thinking. And secondly, people who suffer from Alzheimer's will experience 
forgetfulness, absent-mindedness. Halfway through the talking, he will uh, you know, uh, struggle to recollect words. They will experience memory impairment. They'll have difficulty in recalling past events. If you ask them, especially this disease is uh, seen only people who are above 80 years, or 75 to 80 years of age, not, at the, uh, not among young people. So uh, they'll have difficulty in remembering past events, difficulty in recollecting uh, friends, names of people whom they know earlier, and they will have difficulty in uh, performing daily tasks, daily routines, where they need the help and support of family members. They will have difficulty in concentration. They will not be able to read. They will not be able to concentrate on a part concentrate on a particular task. A lot of them will have difficulty in multitasking. Simple task only. You know, when we are so much used to so many complex multitasking, uh, when people who suffer from this ailment, they will have a problem multitasking. Some people will experience a loss of inhibition. They will take off their clothes without any sense of inhibition, without any sense of shame. Some people experience irritability and they become aggressive for no reason. They become aggressive with family members irritable all the time, getting angry with uh, family members. For some people, they will experience poor judgment, inability to make good, uh, reasonable judgment. Some people will experience the inability to solve problems. Every day, simple tasks, simple problems, they will have difficulty in solving. They need somebody to help them solve problems for them. Then, a lot of them will experience difficulty in keeping track of time and place and space. You ask them where they are, they will not be able to place it. You ask them what time is it, they will not be able to give you the right time. They'll get lost. Then they will have uh, trouble. They'll have problems understanding images. They'll have problem understanding words. Then they might misplace things and have difficulty in retracing their steps. They become so forgetful. And some of them will even experience change of mood and change of personality. Some of them might become socially withdrawn and even experience depression. So these are some of the signs that uh, we need to uh, be aware of, especially among the elderly. Now, Regarding uh, the prevention, this particularly, this Alzheimer is a very difficult and uh, progressive disease. They don't get cured completely. It is uh, a part of the inevitable process of aging. We all have to go through it as we grow old. Of course, not everybody suffers from Alzheimer, but some people are a little more prone to, more vulnerable to because of genetic factors, maybe, maybe because of uh, dietary factors, maybe, maybe because of uh, unhealthy lifestyle, maybe because of some uh, unhealthy abuse like uh, alcohol, chronic alcohol abuse, unhealthy lifestyle like poor exercise, poor diet, and uh, people who are a little aloof, who don't mingle well with the society, with, uh, I mean, poor social life. You know, they are usually a little more, and people who are not so well educated. This is seen more among people who are a little uh, lesser educated. So, you know, many factors are there that makes you vulnerable to uh, develop uh, Alzheimer. Now, there are some advice that we can give to our patients to, you know, uh, enjoy a healthy uh, elderly life into your 80s and 90s. If you practice a few uh, things like uh, having good sleep, for example, if you have good sleep uh, and a balanced work and balanced rest and balanced sleep, uh, you can experience a healthy mental life well into your advanced age. 
if you maintain uh, good health, people who are, uh, I want to say, people who have uh, physical ailments like blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, and say uh, cardiovascular uh, diseases, they are a little more vulnerable to develop uh, Alzheimer. So it is good and necessary for us to maintain a healthy body and uh, fitness so that uh, we can uh, overcome uh, Alzheimer. Now, we also encourage a healthy uh, physical life, uh, like uh, uh, exercising every day, at least half an hour to one hour every day, morning, evening, because uh, it is seen that uh, having a poor, healthy lifestyle also contributes to the development of uh, Alzheimer. So we encourage a healthy physical activity. People who do exercise daily, they are less prone to develop uh, Alzheimer. Then uh, regarding diet, we encourage, uh, especially when you become older, well into your 60s and 70s, we advise uh, people to eat more of fruits, vegetables, more of fish, and uh, less red meat. And we encourage people to take uh, curcumin. Curcumin is that ac active ingredient found in our haldi, that masala, haldi masala. It, the, it has been a, pro a proven fact that people who uh, eat regularly, they uh, uh, suffer less from Alzheimer. Then uh, we also encourage a healthy social life. You know, when you are all the time to yourself, when you're all the time uh, staying alone, lonely, aloof, you know, there's a chance of developing men many mental health issues. So we encourage people to enjoy and to stay as much as possible a socially active life that uh, keeps the brain uh, active and uh, keeps the brain uh, healthy and strong. Then we also encourage people to, elderly people especially, to learn new skills every day. It helps the brain to, you know, maintain its plasticity. Like, for instance, reading every day or being intellectually active in active discussion with people, with other people, so that uh, it helps keep the brain plasticity strong. Then... Uh, we also uh, advise people to avoid alcohol and drugs as much as possible because it is seen that uh, alcohol also causes uh, contributes to uh, dementia. Then uh, we also advise people to you know, manage their stress well. Too much stress can cause all sorts of mental illness that includes uh, Alzheimer's disease also. So learn to handle your stress well. Now, regarding the treatment, we have a medical treatment that we all know, and that is confined to doctors in the mental hospital. We have a few mental uh, medication that can improve. But let me tell you, this Alzheimer's disease is not 100% curable. It is a progressive disease. Despite medication, people will uh, you know, progress deeper and deeper into you know, uh, debilitating uh, effects of the disease. So the chances of recovery is uh, not so good. So, however, we try to provide as much as uh, possible a good uh, family support so that the patient can enjoy a good quality of life. The aim of our treatment is that besides medication, we have something known as psychosocial care. The aim of this treatment is to integrate them into the family system and to make they, them as useful as possible. Integrate them and make them as useful as possible and help them to enjoy a good quality of life before they die. So this is the aim of our treatment, not to reverse. It is impossible to reverse the whole process back to normal. You can't reverse an 80-year-old, 90-year-old man back to a young man. So uh, we have to accept the inevitability. Now, uh, we, uh, part of the psychosocial care includes educating the uh, family members about the disease. Very, very important. Many people who don't understand, they say, oh, how to manage, how to go about, you don't know. 
and because of uh, ignorance because of uh, uh, poor uh, understanding about the disease the patient becomes unattended ignored and neglected which is which makes the disease worse because of that we need to educate the family members very very important especially for those of them who are the main caregivers the nearest uh, family members who are attending to this case they need to be well versed well educated regarding the nature of the illness the progress of the illness the treatment how to talk to them how to manage their life how to provide for all their needs it can so ba para sanjay dibal again this we call it psychoeducation which is very important for the caregivers then the next is the medication that it will be prescribed by the uh, treating doctor wherever the psychiatrist is so he will provide some medication for them <clears throat> and the uh, responsibility of the uh, caregiver is to ensure that he gets his medication uh, on time and regularly because on their own they will forget on their own they will cannot be held responsible sometimes they miss out their dose they forget they refuse to take so we have to ensure the caregivers that all these things are uh, uh, taken care of then another very important uh, factor in uh, providing psychosocial care is providing a conducive positive environment here i mean an, an environment where there is love where they are wanted and accepted and cared for this is the main uh, core essence of uh, providing social, psychosocial care if a patient is made to live in such an, an warm environment where there is love where there is acceptance where they are wanted and loved and cared for he will improve he will enjoy his life but if the environment is negative here i mean he is not loved he is not accepted he is not wanted and nobody wants to take care of him maybe because of uh, family problems because of financial problems in a situation like this the progress of the disease might worsen it might aggravate and uh, that's bad prognosis for the patient so providing the right conducive environment for the patient is very very important then uh, another uh, psychosocial care is to make them feel useful by keeping them uh, connected socially by keeping them engaged mentally so making them useful making them uh, wanted in the family this is going to be a very very important thing for them remember our clients our patients they all have feelings okay pagala ho je akun na janie ina ka no hoide hoy mental thinking process has deteriorated it's not like those days but they have feelings they have feelings they feel good when you love them when you care for them they feel low on the self esteem when you don't take care of them when you neglect them when you ignore them when you say harsh words when you say bad words you know uh, and when you ignore them and when you don't attend to them the feeling becomes very very low and self esteem goes down and many of them will suffer from depression also associated complication along with alzheimer then of course make sure that uh, the social social care also uh, covers providing for all their physical needs like fooding clothing maybe personal hygiene some of them cannot even clean their uh, themselves properly after going to the toilet and back so we need to provide for all the foodings clothing personal hygiene and uh, 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 spending time with them this is also important many elderly people many people don't want to stay with elderly people they they feel very very neglected they feel very low elderly people nobody wants to talk to them children don't wants to talk to them you know they feel very uh, unwanted they feel very neglected this can aggravate their condition and as a caregiver also you make have to ensure that they provide uh, uh, they get some exercise as far as possible hmm. physical exercise 
And uh, of course, the caregiver also needs to exercise a lot of patience. Very, very important. This is a very exhausting uh, problem. It's a very, uh, it does not uh, get cured within a few weeks, within a few months. It's going to go for as long as the patient lives. So with the caregiver needs to have a lot of uh, patience with them. So sometimes the caregiver can also experience exhaustion and burnouts. And of course, another way of providing psychosocial care is to get them, you know, uh, connected with support networks like the Alzheimer Association and, and sharing with them, getting, uh, uh, joining the movement and uh, helping them to break the silence, break the stigma. So this is, uh, in short, uh, a few uh, things that we can do to, you know, uh, improve the quality of life so that they can have a good time before they die. Eventually, we will all die. But this is something that we can do. Medication alone is not enough. That uh, cannot reverse the process. But providing uh, some important psychosocial care like this can help uh, ease the suffering, alleviate their misery, and make them feel wanted and loved till they die. So this is, in short, uh, a small talk on uh, World Alzheimer's Day. I hope uh, you have understood the basic concept of uh, Alzheimer, and I hope you have understood how to prevent. I hope you have also understood a little bit how to take care of them. So the time is now given to, to you to you know, uh, ask questions, see if there's any. Hello. Yes, yes, sir. yes. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. So okay, now so we have now a we question have a and question our session. So, so if you have any queries or questions, we should like to clarify into this time. Okay. Can I say something before that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, regarding the uh, point made out by the second speaker, the lady, uh, she said something about the Naga context, okay, Alzheimer. She asked the doctor about the incidence of Alzheimer in Nagaland. No, you remember your second speaker? So I want to mention something about that in our context. Um, hello, are you with me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. So, uh, Alzheimer in uh, Nagaland. I just want to make some notes on that. Uh, Alzheimer is uh, very common among the Western uh, society. White men are a little more vulnerable. There's still uh, a study, a lot of studies going on as to why wh white people are a little more vulnerable to uh, Alzheimer than Asian race. In India also we have, we do have, but not as much as compared to the white man's uh, race. And closer home in Nagaland, uh, my personal experience is that uh, we do have a lot of them present in our OPD as uh, loss of memory, uh, forgetfulness, absent-mindedness, memory impairment, inability to perform uh, daily tasks, this we get quite often. But what I have seen is it is not so common as it is. We do have this and we do get complaints in the village especially. Baba, ajigali ina ka hoja jo ho, ajigali pahuri jaye, ama to bora buri ho jaye se, pahuri jaye se, kotha koi kine Najania Hojai, Kidiaba, Aro Ulta Puta, Kotakoi. No, quite a common complaint that we normally hear from our fellow villagers. What I have noticed is that a lot of these people don't come to our hospital for you know, clinical examination. So many people assume that to be a normal process of aging. Uh, 
upay na eh. So this is how uh, they don't bring to the hospital and this is how we missed out the cases. But overall, I think this is still too less compared to the Western society. So I used to wonder why, but there's some reason why we probably have less case. One reason could be we enjoy a lot of social support. You know, when somebody is socially engaged and socially involved all throughout his life, the chances of developing Alzheimer's less. Okay. And maybe because we have a very active physical life, especially in the villages, people, a lot of people are active. Even in, when they are 70, 80, they go to the field and come back. So a highly active physical life, a highly active social life, they all contribute to you know, uh, mental well-being, even right into the right old age of 80 and 90. Probably that explains why we have less case. And our diet is quite healthy. So uh, probably these are some uh, factors. And uh, especially in the village, a lot of people are quite healthy. They don't have hyper, uh, blood pressure problem. They don't have uh, blood sugar problem. So that makes them less vulnerable to develop a gender. So probably this explains why uh, this uh, case of uh, incidence of Alzheimer's is less in the villages and in Nagaland too. Yeah, back to you. Thank you, sir. All right, so we have the question. Ah, yeah, please read out the question once again. All right. This is a question from a uh, mid mm -hmm. uh, She is asking, is asking, can we also hear about, hear about health, health programs health by, the by the government for the elderly, for the elderly in, 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 in uh, As such, I don't think we have a real uh, health program for the elderly exclusively. Uh, we have our uh, health centers all over the districts, primary health centers, community health centers, where anybody, regardless of age, elderly people, adults, children, they can all have access. But as such, exclusive uh, uh, mental health program for elderly, I don't think we have that yet. We should have. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mm. Any questions from the participants, students? students? Please uh, read out the uh, question once again. Okay. okay. Yeah. This is a question from Ma'am Alika. She, she uh, wanted, uh, to know wanted to know the issues of issues mental, of health, mental health, health is often considered, often a, stigma considered a stigma in our society. In our society. Mm. So, so what can we do, can to, create we do to create awareness? Yeah. The best example is like today, World Alzheimer's Day. I told you from in the first talk, this the basic idea is to create awareness and highlight on this issue. So if we can have uh, all kinds of uh, activities that can create awareness and highlight this mental health issues and break the silence and help people understand how to cope with this, we, we can go a long way in overcoming uh, stigma and discrimination. One big problem with mental health issues is uh, stigma and discrimination. Because of that, many people hesitate to come forward to come for treatment. This is probably also another reason why people don't want to come to a mental hospital for treatment. So creating awareness like this, like this, this talk today, create, uh, helping create uh, awareness on mental health issues uh, and educating the public, they all go a long way in reducing stigma and helping people to come forward for Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Did it suffice? I hope that satisfies you.
Okay. Yes, students, you can take your time. Yes, yeah. students, you can take your time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Free. Okay, I think the students okay, have all, all, all understood and all understood uh, they don't have any questions. Have any questions? Mm. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so on that note, um, then, um, I would like to thank you like once again, sir, for, for your, your, uh, your uh, uh, insightful, session, insightful session, session, on, session on the topic on the algebra, topic and algebra and, and how to how deal with it. Uh, the, the meaning of our generous and you also for delivering on the psychosocial psycho care, care. Mm. like uh, how, our family, uh, how our family should deal about it, about and, it and, uh, and uh how uh, as a as a uh, 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 caregiver or, you know, or if you suppose if someone if someone one one happens to have an uh, generous to take care of them care of them so uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, you very once much again, sir, once for again, your for your insightful uh, topic uh, and for your deliverance. Mm. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. So on that note, we will conclude our webinar yes, sir. So today. So on that note, we will conclude our webinar today. Thank you all the participants for joining us. Thank you all the participants for joining us.